Welcome to part one of uh, Introduction to Wiring on bonsaibasho.com. Preparation for, for wiring is much more important than the actual winding of wire on the branches. Um, I'm sure many of you have been to workshops where you, uh, the, 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 the workshop leader has just told you to wire the entire tree and that has come round uh, and, and cut off half of the branches. This happened to me as an apprentice in Japan uh, and uh, I'm sure it's happened to all of you. And this is very demoralising. Uh, it's also quite bra um, bad practice. Um, one of the important things for wiring is to ensure that all of the wires have a, have a stable anchor point. Uh, so if you go in and you, you cut off branches that are wired together, um, the, the remaining branch doesn't have an anchor point, uh, and so the, uh, the effectiveness of the wire is reduced. So it's very important to get in there and prune first. So what we're going to do before we even uh, uh, begin to put any wire on is to, is to have a look at the tree uh, and decide what we want to do with it, uh, what sort of style we want to, to, to put it in, uh, decide a, which branches need to be wired, uh, and B, which branches are going to be necessary uh, in the final uh, design. Uh, remove any of the dead, dead branches, there are quite a few dead branches in here, and uh, I, I just sort of clean up the tree before we actually start wiring, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the tree, uh, this is a white pine, uh, and as with a, a lot of white pines we get quite a few dead branches on the inside. Uh, in the UK particularly we don't get enough sun and so a lot of these internal branches begin to die so uh, before we start wiring we'll remove a lot of these. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off some of the dead branches uh, and there are quite a few branches which are uh, like this one here which uh, still have a bit of foliage on them now see that there um, but there's no shoot on the end uh, now while this has green on it at the moment I can quite easily take all of those off uh, because this branch is in the stage of dying uh, and so that needs to be removed. There's no point in me wiring that because uh, there's no bud on it so next year it will die anyway. So those are, buds, those are buds and branches which need to be removed. So I need to just sort of go through and you can see here that just from that one spot all of these branches there except for one, two are effectively useless so I've removed them all. So if I'd have wired that first it would have been a waste of uh, 15 minutes of my time uh, and uh, of quite a large amount of wire. So here's a, a very good example of um, uh, the inside of, a, of the branches where we've got a lot of dead branches and a lot of weak branches. This is around the back of the tree which uh, usually doesn't get as much sunlight uh, and particularly the inside of the tree will often end up dying um, and so what we have here are uh, quite a few dead branches so we're going to get in and just cut all of those off uh, you'll also notice how complicated um, the branching structure is in here uh, this makes it very difficult to wire uh, and so you should always have in your mind uh, to, to try and keep a, a simplified branching structure um, and so just removing dead branches in here, see all of that there is dead, so we'll remove that. Now we've got a branch here coming from the from the inside and it's only got a few small very very weak branches on there. I mean they will survive through to next year um, but because of the positioning of this branch uh, and the, the amount of foliage sort of surrounding it um, we can kind of get away without this without this branch in the final design uh, so we're going to cut that off entirely and this will really help to simplify the branching structure around the back um, and make it a lot easier for us to wire.
So we've gone through the tree, we've cut out all of the uh, the dead branches, all of the, the blind branches without any buds on it, uh, and that's given me a chance to sort of get intimate with the tree and uh, to, to look at the whole branching structure. Uh, we've simplified some of the areas, um, but really now I've got to look at what we've got left and what we want to do with it. Um, so we're looking at the styling of the tree, uh, and this is a, all this is a very sort of formal upright tree. Um, there is a slight lean uh, from this side across there. Uh, both of these bottom branches are pretty much equal uh, length, um, but you notice the, the, the slight lean in the apex uh, is across to the right, uh, and this is very much the stronger of the two bottom branches. So what I'd be looking to do um, is to, to, to use this space in here uh, to accentuate the space here, uh, and just to just to sort of compress on this side a little bit, uh, and to, to really sort of bring the flow of the tree across to the right. Uh, so what I'll be looking to do is to, to lower this down here and just sort of compress it a little bit. The same thing here, what we're going to be looking to do is to lower the branches there in order to get a bit more flow. Now it's very important to always plan ahead with your wiring. You, know, you really have to have in your mind a clear idea of exactly what you want to do, be doing. And that way you can avoid unnecessary wiring. Um, so I've already mentioned these two points. Uh, the other area that really needs a lot of work is this area here. You see there's a big sort of bare patch in there. So we're going to need to do a lot of work to fill that in. Uh, so that's going to involve really bringing these branches round here. And also some of those in there. So we're going to, we're going to need to have some quite thick wire on these branches around here. Whereas most of the other branches will only need to be wired uh, the secondary branch is what I need to be wired. These will need to be wired right from the base um, so we can get a lot of movement in them. All of the other branches, because this is a, you know, since the tree's been styled several times, are in the correct positions and we don't really need to crank them around too much. Uh, but just this area we need to sort of concentrate on. And as I said, planning is very important and you'll see that particularly uh, with, the, with the thinner wires as we get onto there. Um, so Really, the, the most important thing is to, to get in mind exactly what you want to do before you start doing it. Uh, trees don't have excess skin, they don't have the excess bark. So when we try to bend, it snaps. Okay? Because there is no there's no ability for it to stretch. So imagine my finger here is a branch and we're gonna wire it. Now it's very, very important to always make sure that the wire goes on the point where you wish to bend it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend it there. Okay. So the wire is exactly on the on the outside of the curve, and what that's doing is it's forcing the branch back in on itself. So the what so the branch is going to want to snap, as you saw before. But the wire is there; it's pushing it down, stopping it from snapping, and that way we can bend easily. If you imagine the opposite, so the wire isn't on the outside of the bend, when we there try and bend like this, it's going to snap very very easily. So it's very important to always think about the positioning of the wire. So as I said before, when planning the tree, when you think about how we're going to wire it, which way are we going to bend the branch in, where exactly do we need our coils of wire. One of the other reasons why we use wire to, uh, to bend our branches rather than just uh, pulling them down is um, so we can get some movement in them. Uh, if you imagine that I'm a tree and this is one of my branches, uh, uh, what I want to do is I want to lower it down. And what a lot of people will think uh, the easy way to do it is just to pull it down with a guide wire. What happens with the, if you pull it down is you bend in the middle of the branch and you end up with this arch effect, which doesn't look very natural at all. So what we're looking to do, not have the arch, but get some movement within the branch, and we can only do that with wire on it. So what we need to do is we need to wire up with some, some thick wire along here, and then from the shoulder, from the base of the branch, we really need to get some movement in there. So we bend it down quite dramatically. And then what we need to do, or what we can do with wire, is then bend it back up again. And then back down, and then just the tips up. So that way we don't have this, but we have 
this. So following on from that, um, what we are looking to do is to put movement within the branch. Uh, I often see that you know, a lot of people they will you know they'll wire a branch up and they'll take it from here and they'll just move it there. They'll just, just simply just move it. And that's not the purpose of, of, of wiring. What we're looking to do is to get movement in the branch. Uh, and the reason why we want to put movement in the branch is it adds interest and it also compacts the branch. Now, quite often our trees grow too long. In the case of this, this white pine, we're just starting to get a little bit leggy. So we need to compress the tree in a little bit. And wiring allows us to do this. So what we've got here, we've got two pieces of wire exactly the same length. See that there. So what we'll do is in, with one of them, we'll put some movement in it. And we'll just put it in one plane. So we're just going to put some horizontal bends in it. So we just bent the wire, we just bent our branch just a little bit there. So now you can see we've already halved the length. Okay, that's just with one set of bend in it and one plane. Okay, so if we then put bends in another plane, the vertical plane, we've shortened it even more. So what was that length is now this length. Now this is very much an exaggeration, uh, and we should you should never pigtail your branches like this. But it serves as an illustration that putting movement within the branches helps to bring it in. Okay. So realistically, it should be a little bit more like this. So we have some changes of direction, and it's also compressed the branch. So the changes of direction tell a story in a branch that makes the tree a lot more, lot more interesting. So why do, why do branches uh, change their directions? I imagine we've got a, a tree up in the mountains and there's a lot of snow one year and the snow weighs very very heavy on the branch and bends it down and then the next spring it grows up again to the sunlight Okay, and then we get very strong wind and it bends the branch around perhaps snaps it a little bit and then we get some snow and then next year it continues to grow. So there's all of this, uh, these, these different sort of conditions um, which sort of affect the tree and can change the directions of the branch. And also what we do have is every year as the new buds grow out, they grow off in separate directions. Okay? So the more changes of direction a branch has, the older it appears. Um, so very, very straight, thin branches look very young. Branches with lots of movement within them look a lot more interesting and wiring will allow us to put that movement within the branch.